Hey guys, it's Lena here and in this overview tutorial, I'm excited to show you Filter MS-20, an easy to use creative virtual filter effect that emulates the legendary filter and distortion from one of the most desired analog synthesizers ever made. Throughout the video, we'll go through all of its functions and check out how exciting it can sound. Let's get into it. Filter MS-20 is a stereo filter and distortion effect modeled on an infamously aggressive synth predecessor. Its raw nature allows it to pump destructive crunch, howling filter sweeps, and ultra-fat stereo depth into your mixes within seconds, making anything sound massive. On top of its powerful character, it adds many functions that elevate its capabilities, such as distortion, filter modules rerouting, or envelope following that can put all its controls in motion, making your sound ever-changing. Now that we know what's what, let's check out its architecture and try it on a few various types of sounds. Filter MS-20 is divided into two parts, the basic panel, visible after its launch, as well as advanced panel, which uncovers additional settings. These are the modulation sources that we will cover in a minute. The basic panel is divided into three parts, filter, distortion, and output. The interesting part about the first two is that they are interchangeable, so you can change the way the signal flows and decide that it will first go to the filter, such as in this case. or into the distortion once we press this button. You can use this while using presets to see how the different signal flow order will affect these. Lastly, the output section at the end handles the dry and wet ratio, modulation amount, and FX volume level. The first control in the filter section is the master cutoff. This control is linked to both high-pass filter and low-pass filter modes. Usually, it works as a band-pass filter, which is its normal use, as it controls the values of both high-pass and low-pass cutoff points. You will always know the value of the filters defined by the master cutoff, because both high and low pass controls will display a yellow color around them as the master cutoff is moved. Then we see high pass and low pass controls with their dedicated peak controls for each one. Let's now listen to both of these while slowly moving them and changing the peak values to really get a good feeling of the character of the MS-20. Thank you. 
And now let's also explore how the master cutoff will interact with both filter modes while they are set to different values alongside peak controls as well. Finally, here we also have a nice additional parameter called stereo. This one simply offsets the cutoff frequency of the filters for left and right channels, creating a very nice movement into the stereo image. Let's play around with it now. It'll be one of the most fun modulation destinations to target with the mod sources, which we'll show in a second. Moving on, we can now explore the distortion module. This one adds pleasant sounding harmonics to your sound, allowing to enhance any incoming audio, like in this case. This distortion module also has a filter built into it, so you can easily adjust the frequencies that you want to distort. For example, we can increase the low cut control, which will allow us to avoid distorting frequencies from the low to mid spectrum, like this. We can also use the high cut to leave out the higher and mid parts of the frequency spectrum, so they don't distort. The wide range of these controls makes it easy to distort a very particular part of the frequency spectrum, which is super helpful when crafting your sound design or when in need of really precise distortion. Lastly, here we also have access to the dry and wet ratio control, which defines the balance of the distorted and clean signal, as well as the output control, which defines the volume level of the distortion module. Alright, let's now explore the advanced panel which is filled with great additional features. Envelope follower, step sequencer and function generator. To create modulations, you can use the three modulation amount rings to add the value of each modulator. Then you can also define the overall modulation amount with the movement control. The envelope follower creates an envelope shape based on the waveform shape of the input signal or the external sidechain signal. You can use it as the modulation source in a similar manner as the function generators. You can define its threshold level with the sensitivity control as well as its attack and release value with the rise and fall controls. You could easily use the side chain and the snare as the envelope follower audio source and attach it to any parameter. 
With the correct rise and fall and sensitivity setting, we can now hear that each time the snare hits, the parameter value changes, causing movement within the sound, all in sync with the master tempo. Pretty cool! You can use any sound as a sidechain source and experiment to see what works best for you. The sequencer produces modulation changes based on steps. It has 16 steps and within each step we can decide on the modulation amount. An interesting use of this sequencer would be to create an 8 step long sequence with various values per step and attach it to the high pass or low pass controls as well as peak. This allows us to have quantized modulation of the filter, thanks to the cutoff points moving according to the sequencer steps, sounding like this. To take this modulation further, we can change the direction of the sequence, randomize each step's value, and also change the rate of the sequence. There are a few other interesting controls available, such as smoothening the value of each step or defining the output as centered. Lastly, here, the function generator serves as another modulation source. It lets you create different periodic shapes, which then can be sent to various parameters. It can be summed up as something between an LFO and an envelope. One of its uses could be to draw a simple shape like this, set it to an unsynchronized tempo, and apply it to the stereo control in the filter module. Let's hear how it will change the sound. On top of that, Function Generator comes with a few handy preset shapes to use, as well as many editing options. This lets you change the shape to bipolar, randomize the shape's amplitude, or change the function's scaling. Alright, that's all for now. Hope you enjoyed exploring how creative the filter MS-20 is. Don't hesitate to use it on all kinds of sounds to explore its full creative potential. Make sure to also leave thumbs up and subscribe to Arturia's YouTube channel for more educational content in the future. Thanks for watching and see you soon.